Okay, so um, thanks everybody for joining us for our uh, August session of our mid-month artist talks and special big thanks to Laura Youngbird for uh, agreeing to a jury our annual jury show this year and to have a corresponding exhibit in our Minnesota gallery. It's been a treat to have the work on display and um, I, I know we haven't been able to have as many people in as we would like, but hopefully folks have been able to check it out online. And um, for anybody listening, we are able, uh, you are able to see the exhibit on our website, macrossyartcenter.org, the ex exhibitions tab. Um, it'll be up in person through the end of August and um, you should be able to view um, some of the exhibit videos um, beyond that as well. So um, I guess I don't have too much else to say. So Laura, I'm happy to just hand it over to you and I will, um, I'll pull up the, the slideshow. I'm gonna share my screen here. Make sure I can figure this out. And I need to play the slideshow. Okay. Well, Boju and Wagmag, hello, all my relatives. Um, uh, I titled the exhibit Manifestation based on um, one of the paintings, um, kind of the centerpiece of, of the exhibit. And um, talk a little bit about <clears throat> some of those and kind of what went into it. Um, I based this off of, um, it's kind of like a weird Al Yankovic um, take, but it doesn't, it's not like, I'm thinking about making it look more like the original painting, but um, but what I did was I, um, I, I made the shape like a turtle, turtle island and um, and so we have um, Columbia um, bringing smallpox and all kinds of different diseases to, to native um, indigenous peoples. Um, all of these are, this is a process called acrylic transfer. And um, so I would like make a Xerox copy. It has to be a laser print um, and reverse it and then paint it on and, and then scrub out the paper. So these are all just little tiny images that, that make up Turtle Island. So we have different, I guess I'm not, I can't point on here. Maybe I can, yay, okay. Um, yeah, here's some more of the disease and what, what happened is um, iron and guns. So we have some metal here came in from the east side and um, the Spanish brought horses from the southwest and they met on the plains and that's where, sorry about that, um, the Indian Wars started, um, you know, and they had the advantage to, um, to get around and with the guns and the horses. A um, lot, of, lot of history goes into here in this little piece it's just um, it's by a railroad um, but when the railroad went through which is coincident coincidentally happened when they discovered gold in the Black Hills um, they decide they the Indian people were a nuisance and um, the bison were a nuisance and so they you know basically um, Brought, brought the bison to near extinction. And, um, and the people too, I mean, we had huge communities in the United, in, on this continent and, um, and North and South America, um, into Canada, there were borders then. And um, so this is a mixture of contributions to, there's like, architect, you know, architecture, the long houses, and um, this is like a Medea win sign. Um, natives, well, they developed it more in, in the Mesoamerica area, corn, but they, it was all over North America, even into like North Dakota here, the, um, the, the Mandan, Hadassah, and Rikara people um, garden too. Um, 
And what was interesting about their corn, it wasn't like the hybrid corn that you couldn't use the seed. It was, um, it, it adapted to the environment. So it could be in the mountains in Peru and, you know, on the plains into, you know, the north, north area and the south area. Um, and um, it's quite, quite an amazing, amazing thing to just study the um, development of maize. Um, but um, so that's what a lot of these images are. And if anybody, you know, wants to um, look closer, they can. But here is the, the painting that I based that off of. And here we have Columbia. Um, she's bringing light. You can see that this side of the painting is light and this is dark. So she's bringing light and enlightenment and knowledge. She's got a school book in her hand. She's bringing, she's stringing the telegraph wire, the railroads coming through and the stagecoach and the settlers. And just like we show that they, she, he shows the Indians like, just like cowering and um, running and hiding. And like here they're, they, you know, makes the point, it's like they weren't using the land. It's what their manifest destiny, destiny really um, the, the, the general idea and it still kind of plays today. It's like, well, they weren't using the land. So, you know, so we took and used it. We farmed it and, you know, all these big industries and, and different things and, and shipping. Although there were boats and shipping with native people as well. There were um, written languages. Um, very, very advanced civilizations, um, especially the Mesoamerica and um, the mound builders into Ohio um, and Peru. Um, it's, it's just phenomenal when you, when you, um, you study some of that. But, um, but by the time most settlers saw a lot of the natives, they were like decimated from disease and chased from their homes and, you know, just barely hanging on anymore. Um, so, um, so that has kind of been perpetuated through history books. And I can remember even when I was in school, but that was a while back, but I think they still kind of do it, you know? Um, I think they are trying to do more, but I know like North Dakota, it's like third or fourth grade, they study the natives of North Dakota. It's like, come on. <laughs> um, and um, I was um, fortunate to do some work with the Herbert Center for Art Education when they um, added the Native American standards into the um, Minnesota state standards. And um, they're supposed to be, you know, including the indigenous people of Minnesota. However, I think they're, you know, across the, net, the nation, they should be educating not just on the indigenous people of their states, but, you know, overall, because um, it wasn't, there weren't the borders, like I said, <laughs> you know, and I think that might minimize things as well. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, this is called Buried A, C is for Columbus, and it's an early piece I, I did, um, I was probably started, I did collages even when I was younger, I like collage. Um, but this is um, when I was an undergrad, I was very, I also studied archeology span and anthropology. And we were on a dig one summer, I was like a lab assistant and a field assistant. And we came across a buried day horizon. And what happens is the soil profile, there's a, a stratigraphy, I can't say that word, stratigraphy, and it's like labeled like A, B, C, then you have your parent material, then the bedrock. So in this case, we were 
we were digging was by the Red River, um, out by West Fargo. Um, it, this, the flood, but it could also be like a volcano or something like that where it develops a new, like a buried A horizon. So you have ABC and then ABC again. Does that make, if that makes sense. I don't know if we have any. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget the word, geologists out there. But um, yeah, I did this in, it was close to 1992 and they were talking about celebrating, you know, um, the 500 year anniversary of Columbus. And as a student, I was president of the, um, our Native American Native Club, I guess. Um, society, and we started the first tri-college powwow there. Um, but we went out and we were wearing black armbands and praying and the, the news came out. I think they were afraid we were gonna like riot or something, but we were just praying for all the people that have been, you know, that were decimated, killed through genocide. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of it was deliberate. And um, even though some of the diseases weren't at first, when they discovered that it was, you know, they sent smallpox to, you know, they sent blankets to the reservations to, in, you know, infect the people. Like here, oh, you can have these blankets, <laughs> you know. Um, so they've been trying to get rid of the native people, government. Um, and I, um, our current president too is trying to eliminate, and he has um, done some of that where he took the, um, they're not federally recognized anymore. There's a few tribes out there. And um, my husband's from Fort Berthold, the three affiliated, three affiliated tribes. And um, they're trying to, um, it still was still their land when they flooded the Lake Sakakawea. Um, but they're trying to keep the mineral rights for the state, even though it's not theirs. You know, they put this big lake there, but it's still, it's still not, the land wasn't theirs, the mineral rights aren't theirs. And um, I can go on and on about some of this stuff, but they, they also drilled um, like in angles to, um, to get into that big Bakken formation um, into the reservation and tied up, Native people weren't allowed to um, get any um, oil rigs on their land until all the white people around the reservation had established it. And like I said, then they went under too. So um, there are some people now that are getting um, money from the oil um, we're not, we're, he's from White Shield, <laughs> so, um, there's oil, but they don't have any, a lot of oil rigs and stuff up that way. So anyway, we can go to the next, the next one. Um, I painted this picture, I forget what year it is, this like, looks like 2003. Um, and it's from a, a picture, a photograph. And this is my great great grandfather, Namash Kawash. And he was given some medals by King George. Um, English up in, I'm from Grand Portage, Minnesota. And um, it was like the first uh, fur trading post before the, the English came in when the French were, French were there first. And so Grand Portage was the gathering place and there's a huge fort. Well, it's not huge, I guess. Back in the day, they thought it was. <laughs> and um, so they have a reconstruction of that. And then um, that's always interesting if you're, you know, get up that way and you're into history to check that out. Or um, up in um, Thunder Bay, they have the, the English um, trading post, kind of like. And people are all dressed up like, and they have a bakery and a, um, like an iron, what do they, they make horseshoes and stuff, the forge, those kind of things. 
and they bake bread and it's kind of fun. Um, um, and um, they do that at Grand Portage too for um, rendezvous days, which is like a, a family reunion, but it's a big powwow that's been going on for many, many years. And they didn't have it this year because of COVID. So we'll go to the next one. Um, this is a, a painting called Silent Drum. And um, I have a lot of, and this is a little bit older as well, but a lot of paintings that I did from, I don't know, let's say the 90s, especially the 90s, I left the faces out. And that was because my grandmother scratched her face out of her pictures. Um, and I'm not sure why, although in my own yearbook, I mean, this was after, I found out this after, but like high school, junior high yearbook, I scratched my face out of mine, you know, and back then it was, it was a lot cuter. <laughs> so it's like, but it's still just low self-esteem. She, um, she died of cirrhosis of the liver. She was 35 years old. And um, I was like three years old when she died, but I don't remember her. But um, I, I did this in a lot of my paintings um, to kind of focus on the, the lost identity and also have um, like some bottles here. There's a lot of alcoholism and um, codependency, whatnot, kind of forced dependency that, you know, the reservation system um, created. You know, it's like you, you're forced onto the reservation and if you try to get a job outside of a reservation, today even, um, you know, you're gonna get more of the service jobs. There's people that have done really wonderful things, but in general, there's, you know, the kids get treated differently in school. There's still that, um, that mindset, like, well, native people get all this money and they get all this stuff for free. And that just isn't so. There, there are some wealthy, each, each, each nation, is uh, ha is a sovereign nation, and they have a, you know different things set up. So some people might get some money through treaties, but still a lot of treaties have never been paid, and some have um, you know resources that they're getting money for that's from their land, and um, I'd like to you know sh share a book. There's um. A book called Mean Spirit by Lo Linda Hogan, and it's been out of print, but I was been, had managed to get a few copies here and there. Um, and there's another one out, something like Flowers of the. No, I don't. I have it in my living room, Flowers of the Moon or something, and they're thinking of making a movie out of it. But it's about stri striking oil in Omaha, um, and the Osage people there were the um, most murdered group of people ever recorded historically. And, um, you know, people would marry someone and mysteriously the spouse would die, you know, so that they would get their, their um, oil um, or land and, and the rights. And actually the FBI was started because of the, what was happening, the murders there. Um, because everybody in the town just kind of like covered it up, but did, didn't pay attention to it and just, you know, looked the other way, that sort of thing. Um, and um, I don't know about flowers at the, I'm, that isn't exactly the title. It has moon and flowers in the title and um, but um, it's based on a true story. I don't know if that one is fact um, factual, but um, Linda Hogan's is fiction, although based on, tr on truth. So, 
and I love Linda Hogan's writing, so <laughs> if you ever get a chance, look her up. I, okay. just, uh, I just Googled it, Laura. It's Killers of the Flower Moon. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> so let's see. I, I took a workshop from um, Ava. No, I can't think of her last name, but she's from Norway, but lives in Washington state. And um, my paintings and drawings were quite different from my prints. They seemed separate. Um, but when I started, do, you know, doing working with um, monotypes and um, so there weren't like additions like one, one through 20 or whatever that were all exactly the same. These are more like a series and um and they tell a story and i um i use a lot of stencils and um cutouts and washes and various things and ink them up and then flip them over and so there's a variety of um combinations of some of the same sorry shapes um okay we can go to the the next and here's here's another one too with a like more of a ghost a wash in the back um, that was printed on a plate and i started using um, well i just really use the dress in my work um, and that's based on um, you know pictures of my grandmother she's standing in quite a few pictures we have of her when she made her first communion and um but all the her face was scratched out of them and so um i started doing a lot of dresses and um i mean i was doing a lot based on her at first but then it just kind of the dress itself became um kind of a symbol and um you know look and this this is not just for native but for but the culture was forced upon native people <laughs> and religion and dress and you know it's like be this way but at the same time there's no way you could be that i mean i think my grandmother tried and she was you know their reservation is catholic um or that was you know catholic they assigned religions to the different reservations just like a deck of cards and we got catholic and um, so she was, you know, a very um, religious person, and my mother was as well. And and I was growing up, I was ready to be a nun. Um, and I think most Catholic girls are, from what I understand. But or a priest, if you're a boy. Actually, I wanted to be a priest. I was really kind of pissed off that you know, women couldn't be priests. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. But, um, but anyway, it's like there's a pattern, you know, and it's like trying to make everybody like be, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, certain, you know, height, a certain, you know, figure like 36, 24, 36. And if you were too thin or too fat, that was, you weren't good enough. Um, or, you know, you didn't have blonde hair, all of these things. Um, it's like try to fit, make someone fit into a box. And um, society does that to all of us. We don't have to, to listen to that. We don't have to, I mean, on TV too, you're just bombarded with, you need this, you need that, you need this car because cause then you'll be happy and then you'll have a nice house and, your kids will be good. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like we 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 get bombarded with this constantly um, in on our Facebook, on um, in magazines, on you know television. So um, that's kind of basically what I've what I've um, kind of start talking about in these. Okay, go to the next. And this one is another one. Um, my mother was 
was very tall and thin. She could have been a model. Um, and um, so this, this reminds me of a dress that she had back in the 50s. Um, and my, my name that was given to me is uh, Miss Gogija Kwe, and I am Red Cedar Woman. So that's, that's what this stands for. But this is an ongoing series here. Okay, so here's um, an earlier, when I was started doing these, but this one is a series called Common Thread. And um, they're gonna just, I started having a lot of fun with them, you know, these little gloves and the hat and, you know, um, there's, I'm coming into the picture here and uh, with the cedar and, you know, just kind of made these little scribble skirts and, and whatnot. It was, it was just fun, fun to do. I really enjoy them, but it's also very, it's very serious. Um, but maybe kind of funny too, that we, you know, become slaves to fashion. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, these are some dress forms um, that I drew and then made some monotypes from, um, and then did a lot of collage and whatnot with them. These are larger pieces. Um, they're called altered. And they're all, they all have the dress forms in them to start with the main, the main, you know, the main image behind them. This one, I, it's, you can't really tell that much anymore, but it's in there. You can go to the next one. And, um, and here I have a series called Wooden Indian. And, um, you know, just a take on the stereotypes and, um, I'm, I'm just always surprised how people, like non-Native friends, how they can sometimes, you know, just really like, well, actually I had a, a friend, I won't say her name, but um, she's an immigrant, but she's like, really believed the John Wayne movies. <laughs> like that's really how it was. And I think a lot of people did. And I can remember as a kid thinking, well, those are those Indians and, you know, we're different. They just didn't know about us or something because we were way out in the woods. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I, as a child, was, was thought. But, you know, the, the stoic wooden Indian. So, but yeah, it's still, still with the dress and the pattern and the And these, um, these next few um, is another series. Um, I, I created these especially for an exhibit um, called Bring Her Home that was at the All My Relations Gallery and it traveled a little, um, but um, these are titled More Than a Memory. And, um, you know, so many Native women are found, you know, like in, in the woods or in, in a river, in the lakes, um, you know, kind of just discarded, but, um, you know, their, their mothers, their, their sisters, their daughters, um, and um, a lot of attention just isn't brought, you know, if, if somebody's murdered on the reservation, it doesn't get the same, doesn't have the same news value as if it was you know, um, middle class white person. So that's what these are. And yes, I'd like to thank Hankinson Construction <laughs> for, for sponsoring. Um, and we have a little time as well here for questions. If anybody has questions, I'd, I'd be glad to expand. <laughs> I'll stop sharing and, uh, and let anybody who wants to uh, chime in <laughs> with any questions that folks have. Thanks, Laura. Okay. 
<laughs> Everybody's going to be shy and quiet. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to make it come up in front of the classroom. <laughs> I was really interested in a little hearing a little bit more about that. That first one we looked at the very the buried A one, I guess, maybe because I'm not quite understanding the concept of I mean, the archaeological piece that you were talking about with the you said that you you came upon a, a buried A horizon. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I'm just curious we about got it. The we were all excited and the geologists all came out to look at it. So it's more of a geology thing. Well, okay. it's also archaeology too. When, when you're out digging, um, we map the soil profile mm -hmm. and um, we take little samples and match the color of the, the soil and um, any change and um, where we find artifacts and that sort of thing. Um, but, um, but yes, if there was a, a major disaster, like I said, if there was a, um, a volcano, for instance, so eventually you'd end up with the, the top layer, that would be A, then, then the next layer would be B, then C. But if there's that disaster that happens, you'll have like a buried A horizon mm -hmm. underneath. Gotcha. So you'd have like a double. Yeah. Or depending on how many disasters. <laughs> <I don't. laughs> yeah. And of course, the, the river did flood quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So. Dan and Nancy, Whitney, you guys got any questions? We don't. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. But yeah, I appreciate you joining and um, hope you got something out of it anyway. Um, I love making artwork and uh, I'm retired from a, my full time job or from full time working. I guess I'm old enough to get Social Security now. <laughs> so I, I'm an artist full time. <laughs> And I love great. it. Well, all right. Well, thanks. We will definitely get this uh, recording up on the website. So um, it'll be on the same spot as the um, exhibit video. So if you want to, if anybody wants to share it around, um, that's where you can find it. And thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. And big thanks to Laura for taking the time to walk us through some of your artwork. I really appreciate it. So thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Bye, Katie. everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>